I'm sitting here dealing with a lot of AN fittings that are a pain in the butt. I almost just want to go back to barbed fittings and just regular fuel holes. I need holes. Hoses. So, uh, it just makes everything easier to cut down. Then when I have a final rendition of what I'm happy with, with what lines and how they're routed, then possibly go to AN fittings because I inherited a ton of them through multiple setups I've had over time. So I put my AFPR back on. This thing is gigantic. I don't know. This is a, what a aeromotive uh, AFPR that I got with a full fuel setup with uh, the turbo pack, the turbo that I got used from a buddy of mine. And uh, so it came with a whole lot of AN fittings. And now I'm just reconfiguring it rather than needing to cut hoses and do uh, hack hacking into the stainless steel lines. So I borrowed this 90 AN for the fuel rail AN fitting on the end to take off the stock AFPR because I'm running 950cc injectors right now. And it requires the AFPR. I wish it didn't. I wish they, as Justin says, they had just a set stock looking one that goes on the end. It would just go right into the the fuel return line and just be done. But we have to set this to 43 PSI for the 950s to run. Then I did some research and found that the stock fuel line uh, works for it. So I'm running the stock regular old compressed toes bone stock one off of the off of the uh stock fill filter because i don't think i have any need of it and i'm going to be running for a little time a gm math on the intake b4 turbo so i won't be planning on venting anything possibly not even running a blow off valve at all just uh going into whatever boost that a stock side mount i'm just experimenting with what the stock side mount can handle and if I blow the welds off the intake or whatever so so what because I have a front mount and a whole bunch of other goodies so now I'm just playing around with the C how fast I like the reliability and the ease of the stock setup yeah the the hose is really spongy but it's stiff enough and I'm just running stock wastegate on this 16G. I'm not trying to run over 16 PSI, 14 PSI, whatever. And if I want to just see what the heat soak, what my problems I'll get into, maybe run meth injection, mount this uh, math translator box somewhere inconspicuous, nice, clean setup. For right now, it's kind of dirty, but it is what it is. Uh, I put the injectors in already, running stock fuel in um fuel line into the fuel rail stock fuel rail can handle 950s just fine um i never had any problems with it uh then now now all that's left is me to get a, another 90 with a barbed fitting to go on the bottom of this to go into the stock fuel return line down into down into the car to back to the fuel tank because it's uh I don't want to run the the stainless line. There's no I'm not running enough fuel to require me to buy that full stainless line all the way back to the tank. It's it would be unnecessary and it's just a, a pain in the butt to get underneath the car and I haven't got there yet. Then it had this line running underneath the FPR before, which is a huge return, which is no point if I'm running not even half of that that diameter into the in, into the uh, fuel rail. So this to be after it's all pressurized and it's just a return tank. It's overkill. So plus trying to get this with two hose clamps, which I ran before, to crimp crimp down into this little tiny return line is it's it's a fuel leak hazard and definitely don't want to blow my car up running it hot and setting fuel on fire on the freeway and i don't know i had a fuel leak that would just be horrible this was installed on this giant afpr however like i say however old it was because this was the fuel line 
feeding it before. So I don't know what injectors this car had before. Well, not no, nothing that big ran on this motor. This is a whole rebuild. The motor that this car came with was built. I don't even think it was built as good as I built this one. I don't know. I was very new to the DSM game, to the car game. I came from Honda World, so this is a whole different animal. I'm from Hondas. I love them. They're reliable. It's all get out, and you can have fun, and they're quick cars. But this thing, I've by far learned so much. This is quantum physics compared to what what I knew in, in Hondas. So... I'm running the 16G right now on the side mount, like I said, just to see. Uh, this is my bigger turbo that, like I said, when I bought those uh, those those injectors and all the fuel rail and the AFPR and chip and everything, I got this turbo with it along with a front mount intercooler and just a whole lot of AN fittings that I get to play with and reconfigure and learn a whole lot. Now what's next, uh, after getting that barb fitting to i'll buy that thing tomorrow like i said i need the 90 with the with the a 8 a n 90 with a barbed fitting on the end so i can just put the plain old regular easy to install rubber hosing with two clamps and that's reliable that's good enough for me it's just a return line then i need to install my uh 255 wally back in there and this is the other housing that i run i'm gonna try to clean this thing up a whole lot solder the wires in there make it a whole lot more reliable so i don't have those little electrical gremlins that are notorious in this car there's nothing i can do to beat it and it's been a pain uh, also zip tie technician because this is a mitsubishi uh What's really weird, I've went, burnt through so many alternators in here and not disconnecting the battery while I was working on it and then a wrench or something just always finds a way to touch and arc that positive lead off the thing, off the uh, alternator. So always disconnect your battery whenever you're working on the car because you never know what is going to go down there. It's like magnetically attracted to wrenches and you'll always arc that. And once it's arced, your alternator's dead. There, you might as well go to store and go replace it. Now, they will warranty it because there's no way they can prove that you burnt it out. But it's just better not to do it. Also, with these mounts I installed, I installed the uh, urethane mounts. Uh, I think they were the 75s. 75A. There's a 60, like a durometer 60 and a 75. And then the 90s, just teeth chattering, full race, I think, or the 105. I forgot. I got like the mid-range one, but it's still enough to start backing out bolts and chattering everything away. It actually, I, I'm blaming my mounts because it didn't happen before. My alternator vibrated and started wiggling, so it actually bore out the rod, bore out the hole on the aluminum side. And now, if you, I mean, I don't know if you can really tell. The alternator sits at a pitch, so I need to ream the hole for the, the pin out a little bit bigger and put a dowel in there or a, fa a, fa a tube in there so it can sit center again and sit straight and or call uh, J Racing Kit because I bought an alternator relocation kit to put this in the back, but... I read on the forums that the alum billet aluminum mount that they sell it, it vibrates especially with these stinking mounts it vibrates so much and it'll crack so they sell a stain a billet stainless steel or i don't know if it's billet or not but a stainless steel bracket you put on the back and that's a lot more sturdy so then you run it on the back and you don't have to worry about the vibration breaking it off while you're gone because what's worse than a arced arced uh, dead alternator is one that falls off when you're on the freeway and that won't be good either because now you have a big 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 problem so that's what i'm working right now in the lab uh i got that and then other goodies to go i'm trying to set up all this for reliability and i also got my transmission back so that'll be an update for getting rid of this dog 
out of here that doesn't want to shift in the first gear. I've never driven this car with the transmission right. So as the problems pro progressed and I got more knowledgeable with the car, I found out, well, hey, this transmission had problems ever since I've had the car for seven years. No matter how much clutch adjustment I do or how many clutches I put in there, it doesn't go into first gear because of uh, obviously first gear had been burnt out from from day one so uh, other than that that's what I'm doing and until I buy the parts I need and be more reliable this is a GoPro everything all day or day y'all take care